All right, guys, you've done the biggest and hardest part so far, which is building out the landing page for our site. We're moving on to the global header and we're going to jump right into it. And the global header, of course, is that piece. If you look at the Abercrombie and Fitz site, it's staying here at the top of the page. Um, so we're going to show you our version of that and uh, you're going to love it. I know I'm loving it. So let's do it. All right. Getting into the back end of our Divi site here. We are going to go ahead and go to Divi Theme Builder. And yeah, we're using the Theme Builder for this. It's one of the newer additions to the Divi feature set, which allows you to create some global styles. So we're actually going to be using this quite a bit throughout this tutorial series. Um, in this one, we're going to finish building out the header and the footer. And in the next set, we're going to be building out things like product pages and category pages. We're just going to be doing a lot of cool stuff that was not previously possible. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on add global header and then bold global header. We're going to fire up. It's going to think about it and it spits you out right here. It already added a section here for us. And what we need to do is go ahead and add a column, uh, a row section. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a two thirds, one third layout. So that's going to be this one right here. Oh, actually, no, this one. So we're going to click on that. And then we need to change some of the section settings before we start dropping things in there. So first thing we'll do is open up the section settings and we're going to go ahead to the spacing options. And within spacing, we're just going to set the top and bottom padding to be zero. So we're going to go zero, we'll link them up and that'll take care of that. And also, we want to make sure that this is going to be a sticky header. And if we go to Abercrombie and Fitch, we can see that it stays at the top of the page there. So let's go back to the theme builder. We're going to go to the advanced section settings. We're going to go down and we're going to go to scroll effects. And here where it says sticky position, we're going to say stick to the top. We don't need to change any of the other options here because they don't really apply to us, but there's obviously a lot of different things that you can do here to change the way that it reacts to your site. Um, but we're just going to keep it this as is. And next up, we need to change some of the row settings. Now within the row settings, of course, one of the first things we want to do is change the sizing. We are going to tell it to equalize the column heights, of course which is this option. We're going to set the width to be 100% because we want our header to span the entirety of the page. And then, of course, also pull that max width slider to 2560 on my screen and uh, save it that way um, because it makes the full width. Um, stepping to spacing, we want to make sure that it's not too wide at the top or bottom. So we're going to set the padding for the top and the bottom to be zero pixels. So we're going to go ahead and link those two. And then for the left right padding, we're going to put 5% uh, oh, well, like five pixels, but we want 5% to be on the left and right hand side because we don't want things to be too bunched up um, and on the edge of the, 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 the viewable screen space. So that's going to do that. And then we've used this little bit of code before, but we're going to be reusing snippet number two here. Because what we want the second column to do is to uh, center the modules inside of it vertically. And when we get a little bit down into this, you're going to see exactly why we want to do that. So let me just go ahead and copy this from the blog post. And I'm going to open up the row settings. I'm going to go to column number two. I'm going to go advanced, custom CSS, and then in the main element, I'm going to drop the CSS right there. And there you see it again, that aligned self center. Cool. So now we've got the stage set. It's time to add one of our menu modules. So we're going to go here in the first section, because if we look at Abercrombie here, we have the first section. So let's go back to the theme builder. We're going to type in menu and add the menu. Now, we don't have any menus created yet, and we're going to get to that in just a little bit as we start fleshing out this header menu. Um, 
you know, and, and the reason for that is let's set the stage first and then we can go back and tweak and change things a little bit as need be. So in the menu, first thing we want to do is go ahead and set a logo. Now we have our logo uploaded already. We set it in the Divi, in, in the, in the Divi settings as our logo. So we can go ahead and select this, but there's another way to do it. We can actually go ahead and click on this data element, which makes it dynamic. And then we say site logo. And it's actually going to go ahead and pull the logo that we inserted there earlier. So now the reason we do this is that anywhere in the site where we use, utilize the site logo and we apply it this way, if we change the Divi logo over here up at the top in Divi theme settings, it will dynamically change throughout your website. So you don't have to go ahead and redo this. This is a really cool thing. Um, this is not the newest feature in Divi, but it's one that you should be using if you want to build sites in the most efficient way possible. Now, if we go to the logo link URL, um, so we go to link here, we're going to put that to just a forward slash because what that'll do is it's going to make, when a user clicks that logo, takes him to the root of your site, and that makes it a little bit easier um, than adding, let's say, a home link on your page. That was all the rage back in the 2010s. We're 2020, baby. We're doing things a little bit differently now. So that is for you to apply. So let's go to design here. And of course, the logo size is just ridiculous at the moment. And we're, we'll be addressing that in just a moment. But for the time being, let's work on this menu text. So we'll go to text. And then we're, we're going to look at the menu text size is, um, well, firstly, the color, we want it to be the blue. And then the menu text size is at 14. We're going to make it a little bit bigger. And don't mind the way that it looks on the page right now. I know it looks horrible. We're going to fix that by having, obviously, way less menu items um, in the future. For menu letter spacing, we're going to add 0 0.5 pixels. And we came up with that by analyzing what the Abercrombie and Fitch site did. We inspected those elements and we saw that they used that type of letter spacing. Um, the next thing we want to look at is the drop down menu. And you know how when you have a drop down menu similar to this, it makes that line there? Well, we're going to add something similar here. So, drop down menu line color, we're going to use the dark blue again that they utilize on the Abercrombie and Fitch site. And then lastly, we're going to tackle this massive logo. You see that it's not that big here on the Abercrombie and Fitch site. So we're going to go to Advanced, Custom CSS. We'll scroll down to the menu logo. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be adding snippet number eight. And again, if you guys missed it earlier, it is listed in the blog post linked in the description of this video. So I'm going to pull that, I'm going to paste it, and instantly everything has space to breathe now. The logo looks much more similar than this one on the Abercrombie and Fitch site. So um, very easily, you know, and just to talk a little bit about what the CSS does, it just says that this logo can have a maximum size, well, a size of 225 pixels. Super easy makes that quick, impactful change. Now that this is done, let's tackle this weird menu that we've got set up here. But first, good practice to kind of save as you go through it. So I'm saving that. Cool. So let's go to the back end dashboard of our site. So I'm going dashboard. We need to create the menus that we'll be using. Now, we're going to be using different menus for, let's say, in this example, like a desktop menu right here. We're going to want one for this area where we list just the base menu for desktop. And on the right hand side, we're going to have an indication for um, different menu items based on whether the user's logged in or not. And then, of course, on mobile, the menu is going to look a bit differently. So we're going to address that as well. So for each of these instances, we need to create an actual menu. So let's get to it. To do that, we're going to go to Appearance, Menus. And you'll see that we have no menus created right now because it says create your first menu below. First menu that we'll create is going to be called our desktop main menu. 
And it's not gonna let us add anything now. We first have to click the Create Menu button. Great. Now we'll start adding the different elements. Now if we look at the Abercrombie and Fitch site, all that it has is its various categories here. So we're gonna go ahead and add those. Now we already have categories. We talked about them earlier. If we go here to Products, Categories, I'm going to open this in a new tab so we don't lose our spot here. We have all of our different categories as well as its different subcategories, which will actually end up being sub menu items. So we're going to translate that over to our menu. So let's come over here and we're going to add a custom link. And first thing you need to put in here is the URL. So we find the URL, we're coming to our categories, men, we'll right click the view option and click copy link address, come back and paste that right in there. And we're also going to use the relative path. So we'll delete the URL out of that uh, menu category item. And then all we'll say that this is men's and add it to the menu. And there you see it popped in. Now we're going to do the same thing for women's. We can use the same URL because we already know that the woman category is just forward slash woman. And we'll delete out that domain name out of there. And then we'll just call it women's and add that to the menu. Now looking at the way they did it here, that's similar, but we will be switching around men and women. So when we click back here, oh, click back here, can just drag woman above men seems kind of appropriate now doesn't it <laughs> um, okay so let's add all of the subcategories also so I'll show you how to do that so we're on woman right now that's the first one we're gonna right click this one copy link address come back and then we're gonna go paste that in there just as before delete the base URL and let's say this one was for shirts, I believe. Hoodies, hoodies. So we'll just say hoodies and add to menu. Now, to make this nested or a sub menu item of women's, we just drag it up and you see how it indents here. That means that it's gonna be a subcategory of women's and it actually lists it right there. So we're gonna complete this quickly for all the other steps. We'll probably fast forward through this to not bore you too much, but you get the concept. So let's fast forward all right and there we have it we've got our women's hoodies shirts men's hoodie shirts and then our accessories now all we do is we go ahead and we save this menu and once that's done it'll give us a little notification here that it's been saved okay desktop menu has been saved great so when we bounce back here to the theme boulder we're gonna go ahead and save the page. I know we did that earlier, but this is just a precaution. And I'm gonna go refresh the page. I'm gonna reload it. Here we have it. And when you go in, you'll see everything again. Just thinking about it. There we go. So again, just to recap, save this, go back. And this is the important step. You want to save all the changes here since this is the first item we're adding. And now when we go to the front end, we'll refresh. And boom, you'll see that we have the new header with the new definition of the logo width and it's sticky at the top. Let's jump back in the theme builder, edit this. And then what we're gonna do is edit the menu module again. And now we can say desktop main menu, save that. Well, it didn't take it there. Let's just go with select the menu. And then we'll select desktop main menu. There we go, save. And save. And now we can conveniently throw the refresh on the front end and it's been updated with our new menu. And as you can see, there's that blue line, hoodies, shirts, and accessories that go to the respective uh, category pages. But we still need our little area on the right-hand side that has our cart, that has our My Account section, 
as well as the search. So let's add that in the menus right here. For that, all we need to do is create new menu. Great. So now we're going to call this one, let's just go with right menu logged in, just so that this one is for our logged in site visitors and create that. And what we're going to add to this is we have the my account page here as they're logged in, they'll need that. We're going to add that. And then what we can do is we're going to go and add a class to this because we want a nice little icon next to it that says my account, you know, so it's going to be a little silhouette. Now to add a class, normally you'd be able to see it right here what you need to do to enable it, because by default it's turned off. You just go to screen options, you click on CSS classes, and you see that it instantly pops in right over here. Now the class that you add to this, so that we can add that icon later on, is DE icon dash menu. Just go ahead and save that menu. So this menu has been saved now. We need to create one for users that are not logged into the site. So we're going to go again and click on create new menu. We're going to call it very similarly, right menu logged out, oops, out and create. And now this might be a little counterintuitive, but we're going to use my account yet again and add it in, we click that, and now we can, you see how we can change the navigation label here? We're just gonna call this um, login slash uh, in slash register, and then we're gonna be utilizing that same class because we want the same icon to be added. Um, so de-icon-menu, and we'll be adding the code for that in, in not so long so that you can see the icons. So there's that one. Let's save that. And let's go ahead and add these things to the actual menu at this moment. So let's go back to the theme builder. Now everything is saved in there. So we can just refresh this. It'll take us to this page. We go to global header and I'll do its thinking again and it's loading the menu on that side and here we're just going to go ahead and add well actually you know let, let's do this let's just copy this one let's see if copy is working yet copy module and now it's working paste module now we don't want all that in there so we'll just go in here with logo we'll delete it and then with the actual content we'll select let's say the logged in menu option. There you see my account. Now we're gonna add some elements here. We're gonna add the shopping cart icon and you see it pop in right there. We're gonna add the search icon. You see that pop in right there. Let's change the color of those icons because they look terrible. And here we have the option for shopping cart. We'll go with the blue. Search icon, go with the blue. And that looks great. Now, you have some other options here like size and all that fun stuff. You can mess around with that if it suits your needs in your site. But we're going to do one more thing um, over here, um, which is setting up some of the conditional logic, which is one of the newest features within Divi. We want this to only be shown when we have a person visiting the site that is logged into an account. So we're going to go to conditions. We're going to add a new condition. And what we need to go and look for is the logged in status of the user. We want to show it only if the user is logged in. So that's cool. We can give this a name, but you know, logged in, we can call it if you want. And we're going to enable the condition. There we go. So now we've got our logged in condition here and we can go ahead and save that. Now, if you recall, we just created two menus here. We've got right menu logged in, right menu logged out. Let's go ahead and set up a condition for the logged out one. So let's come back here and, you know, per use, we're going to copy this one, duplicate it. We're going to go in. We're going to select the logged out menu. 
the elements are going to remain the same. The design is going to remain the same, but the thing that's going to change is the condition because we don't want them both to show when the user is logged in. So we go back to conditions. We can edit this condition. We're going to say user is logged out. We'll call this condition logged out. And we'll enable it. We're going to go ahead and save that. We'll save the page. And then we'll refresh the front end. And you know what do you guys expect might happen? We, what are we going to see? Let's take a look. Let's refresh the page. And there we have it. We're logged in. So it says that my account is accessible. And if we were logged out, it would say um, log in or register. So that's perfect. One thing I want to change, though, is I don't like this lowercase a. So let me just come back here, select the logged in menu, select, and I can click on this drop down. And all I need to do is go and capitalize that A and save the menu. And then on the front end, it should have a capitalized A at this point. There you go. That was super easy to go ahead and do. Okay, so now before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's finish building out some of the other menus we'll be using in the coming steps. Going back to our menus area right here, we're gonna set up the mobile menus to be used because they'll also display it a little bit differently than the actual desktop ones do. So essentially what we'll do is we'll recreate all the links that we did previously. So I'm gonna speed through this really quick and um, we'll fast forward through this so you don't have to go through it all, but definitely pause if something comes up that looks a little different. All right, and there we go. So this is up to the point that should feel pretty familiar. Now, since this is the logged in menu, we're gonna go back to the actual pages. We'll add the my account link, and we'll do the same as we did with the other one. We'll change that A to be capitalized. And then we're not adding an icon for this one because on mobile, I don't think it'll work as nicely. And we're not gonna add a cart icon, but we're gonna add the cart page and the checkout page. So we'll add those. And then we'll nest the checkout inside a cart because if there's nothing in your cart, you probably are not checking out out of anything. So let's go ahead and save the logged in menu. Cool. And guess what? We're making one more, and I promise this is the last one. I know this is tedious. We're gonna create one more menu for the mobile menu logged out users. Again, we'll speed through until things get a little bit different, but you know, it shouldn't. We're just gonna change that one my account page to say logged in register instead of my account. So let's go to hyperspeed. Okay, so now we've got the base laid down. Let's go back to the pages, add my account, cart, or checkout and cart. Add my account at the top. Like we said, we're gonna rename this to be log in register, just as we did with the desktop version. And then we'll just go ahead and nest checkout inside of cart once again, and we'll go ahead and save the menu. Okay, right, so let's head back to the theme boulder here. So we've got a layout here that is gonna be showing on the desktop. To make sure that it only shows on desktop, we're gonna go ahead and look at the settings for the section. Um, you, there's two ways to do this. You can go to advanced visibility and then say, okay, well disable it on what devices. Here we'll dis disable it on phone and tablets and say, okay. But another way, you can just right click it and when you click on disable, you see that it's disabled on phones and tablets and only visible on desktop. But you can click these as you please and they'll do the same thing. So we'll keep it as this and go ahead and save it for the time being. And now we're gonna refresh the page when this is done because we wanna make sure that the um, menu data for the new menus that we created load into this page. So let's refresh it. We'll go into the header. Okay, cool. So now we're noticing also um, that we don't have an icon here yet. So let's start with that part. Now what we need to do is add a little bit of a snippet here, which is gonna be snippet nine 
in um, our, our uh, blog post. I'm copying and pasting that right now. And the way we're going to add this is where we've been adding a lot of the code. Here on the page where we had our product categories, we're going to go to Divi, Theme Options, scroll down, and here below Snippet 4, we'll just make a few spaces and we'll paste the code. And what this is doing is telling us to use this DE icon menu class use the font family for the elegant theme modules and I will place a link in the description of this video how to find these content codes but these content codes actually go to different icons within this ET themes uh, font family and down here we just set the color of the actual icon and the size and then just a transition for it as it changes colors or maybe or something like that so save that and when we take a look at the front end, let's refresh really quick and see what that does, if this my account gains an icon or not. And there it did. We have a cool little silhouette user icon right there. So that was super easy to do. So we can hop back to the actual theme boulder now, and we're gonna add some more modules for this. Now, before actually before we do that, We'll notice how this is still on the left hand side here. This menu is on the right. That's where we want it to be. All we need to do is add just a little bit of code once again. And that's going to be snippet number 10, um, which is going to be super easy. All we need to do is go into the uh, advanced tab and then the custom CSS for this menu item. So, oops, I clicked on the actual menu. You see it works though. Um, so we'll just go here, we'll click on this, and then go advanced, custom CSS, main element, and paste the code in there. And you see that it floated away, but let's just do it to the other one as well. Do the same, custom CSS, main element, paste that. And you see that both end up up there on the top Let's save that really quick. It's good to do this and preview your work as you go because it gives you that instant gratification of the work that you're busy doing. And then we see that it's on the right hand side. It looks pretty great. I think it works well. Um, and that works. So now we've got the conditional logic in there already. We're gonna wanna add one more thing. We've got the search bar right here and you know that, that actually works pretty well. Um, if you wanted to, for example, switch the order of the search bar and the cart icon, because sometimes the cart icon tends to be on the right hand side, we've included some CSS in the written tutorial that you'll find on the blog post that you can add to switch those around. But we don't want to do that in this particular um, portion of the tutorial. Um, so let's just keep building and we want to start getting to the mobile menus. So. Right now, if we go to the back and we look at mobile, we can see that this part's grayed out because it's not gonna work on mobile. So let's make that nice and big again. And um, we've disabled the section on mobile devices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the section and then we're gonna go ahead and get into the section settings and we're gonna tell it to not stick for the second one and we will just go here and advanced scroll effects stick to top we'll just say do not stick and then we'll go ahead and save that and now what we'll do is we're going to delete all of the modules in the right column which are these guys so bye 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 and then all we need to do is go ahead and modify the menu here on the first left hand side. And we're gonna select mobile menu logged in. And that looks good. We, and you know, the conditional options would need to be set of course. So let's just go to advanced conditions. Add a condition, and just as we did before, we're gonna look at the logged in status. User is logged in. We're gonna go with logged in. Enable the condition, and we're gonna save that. And then we're gonna save this, and that's gonna be good. Now we 
actually, um, we're going to duplicate this one again. We're going to go in. And we're going to use the mobile menu logged out. We're going to go advanced. We're going to go conditions. And now, again, we'll modify the condition to be user is logged out. We'll just have the name reflect the same thing. We're going to save that. And then we just have one more step to do. We need to make sure that this section is only displayed on mobile devices. So we're going to right click that. We're going to say disable. We're going to switch it from desktop and just put active on mobile devices. Now all we need to do is go ahead and save the page. And when we go to mobile, we'll see that these ones are being activated instead of the one at the top. Now, a little hamburger icon here looks pretty terrible. It's the wrong color. So let's quickly fix that by just going back into the menu settings, design, and then it's going to be icons. And here we've got the hamburger icon. Let's make it the blue. And for the second one, we'll do the same thing. Design, icons, hamburger menu icon, make it the blue. And when we go and check out the mobile, now it's that nice blue color. We'll, we'll go ahead and save that. And now when I go here to the site and I refresh the front end, we've got our icons right here. That all looks and works fine. But when we minimize this width of the screen, you see here that we have a hamburger menu in the right color and it's got all the appropriate menu icons that we would expect to see. So we can pull that right back out. You see how it dynamically goes ahead and changes and adapts to what's happening on the screen. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your header for this part of the tutorial. There's only one step left. Stick with me. We're almost there in the home stretch.